Hello lovely people, it's Medicosis Perfectionitis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my cardiology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about aortic coarctation, aortic dissection, cardiac physiology, digoxin, and much more. Today, it's time to talk about broken heart syndrome, also known as Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. What does Takotsubo mean? Takotsubo is a pot used by some Japanese fishermen to trap the octopus, and it looks like this. If my ventricle, especially the left ventricle, balloons like this, so it has the shape of the balloon, just like the Takotsubo pod, then we call this Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. You gotta be very careful because this disease can mimic a heart attack, but there is no occlusion of the coronary artery. This attack of broken heart syndrome is usually brought about by hearing bad news or severe emotional stress. Now smash the like button, subscribe, and let's get started. This video is part of my cardiology playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum understanding and retention. Here's your heart. It has three layers in its wall. The inner layer is called the endocardium. Endo means on the inside. And then the muscle layer is the myocardium, made of what kind of muscle? Is it skeletal, smooth, or cardiac? Of course, this is cardiac muscle. And then around this, we have the pericardium. Now, I want some good student to tell me, what's the difference between the pericardium and the epicardium? Comment below. Which layer of these has the valves? Answer, endocardium. That's why when I have fever and murmur, what's the diagnosis? Oh, it is infective endocarditis because the endocarditis involves the valve and the endocarditis involves the valve and the valves will give me murmur. Be careful because Takotsubo cardiomyopathy is not a myocarditis. Cardiomyopathy has many types. Here are four. Dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, restrictive cardiomyopathy, and Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. We're talking about the last one here, which is broken heart syndrome. You gotta be very careful because this disease can mimic a heart attack, but if we look inside the coronary, no clots. There is no evidence of coronary obstruction. Oh, okay, which means that Takotsubo cardiomyopathy is not a big deal. Oh, shut up. It can lead to ventricular arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death. Broken heart syndrome in just one slide. History. The patient has severe illness or severe emotional stress or severe physical stress that precipitated the attack. That's why it is sometimes referred to as stress cardiomyopathy. For example, a mother was watching television and she was watching the news only to find out that her son passed away this morning. This is a severe emotional stress. Does it always have to be bad news? No, it actually could be a positive life event. In that scenario, sometimes this same disease is called happy heart syndrome. So it could be the broken heart or the happy heart. The patient will complain of what? Severe, acute, substernal chest pain, mimicking a heart attack, shorts of breath, just like heart attack, syncope, or fainting, and ejection systolic murmur similar to the murmur of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or HOCM. When my left ventricle balloons like this, it will have a wide rounded apex because this is the apex of the heart. But how about the base of the heart? It will be narrow. And this is the outflow tract right here because the blood leaves the left ventricle and tries to go up to the aorta. So that's the left ventricular outflow tract. As you see here, it is narrower than normal. So it's left ventricular outflow tract obstruction, which of course can contribute to syncope. Complications of broken heart syndrome. The severe left ventricular outflow tract obstruction can lead to cardiogenic shock. What's the definition of shock? Inadequate tissue perfusion. This poor heart cannot supply oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. The left ventricle is broken, ventricular arrhythmia. The symptoms can be so severe that they can lead to death caused by heart disease, suddenly. So sudden cardiac death. How can we diagnose this? If we order an EKG, you might find new ST elevation and T-wave inversion. Oh, so this is a heart attack. No, wait, let's do an echo. We have wall motion abnormalities that are transient. Oh, so it's not a myocardial infarction because myocardial infarction by definition is an infarction and infarction is never transient. It's irreversible. Once I infarct my heart, I cannot go back. Let's do angiography to look inside the coronary arteries. 
Do we find obstruction? No. Do we find occlusion? No. Did you see a clot? No. In order to confirm the diagnosis, we need to rule out myocarditis and pheochromocytoma because myocarditis is a problem in the cardiac myocytes. It's also a myopathy. And pheochromocytoma, the adrenaline rush, will give me physical stress, emotional stress, and if it's severe enough, it can give me chest pain. How can I treat this? Make sure that we're talking about Takotsubo cardiomyopathy and not acute coronary syndrome. Make sure that this is not an infarction. Okay, medicosis, it's not an infarction. There is nothing in the coronary artery. The coronary artery has no obstruction. Now it depends. Is the patient hemodynamically stable or hemodynamically unstable in a state of shock? Well, if the patient is hemodynamically stable, decrease the load on the heart. How do I do this? diuretics to decrease the preloads, vasodilators to decrease the preload and the afterload. For example, you can give nitroprusside or nitrate. But what if the patient is hemodynamically unstable, such as in cardiogenic shock? Well, ask yourself, do we have left ventricular outflow tract obstruction? If the answer is no, there is no obstruction of the left ventricular outflow tract, you can give vasopressors like phenylephrine and vasopressin. Phenylephrine is an alpha-1 agonist, vasopressin is good old ADH. We want it to act on the V1 receptor to constrict. Why do you want to constrict vessels? I want to raise the blood pressure because the patient is in a state of shock and shock usually has tachycardia but hypotension. But what if there is left ventricular outflow tract obstruction? Then you gotta raise the preload. Why? Because left ventricular outflow tract obstruction means I cannot get blood from the left ventricle to the aorta. Okay, so what's the treatment? Give the ventricle more blood to try to push more blood to the aorta by increasing the preload. How do I do this? Simply elevate the patient's legs. Give intravenous fluids to increase the venous return, which will raise the preload. If you remember hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, it was contraindicated to give positive enotropes. Do not give digoxin or dobutamine. Why not? Because they make the ventricle contract harder. And as you contract harder, the muscles will squeeze this opening, making it narrower, worsening the symptoms. So the same idea applies here. Do not give this patient positive enotropic agents, lest they should narrow the left ventricular outflow tract. Do you want to learn about angina, myocardial infarction, arrhythmias, strokes, acute respiratory distress syndrome, drowning, hypothermia, hyperthermia, and much more? Download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about the digoxin, diuretics, the antiarrhythmics, the antianginal medications, the antihypertensives, and the anti hyperlipidemics download my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com there are more than 300 premium videos on this channel available only to those who click the join button and choose the highest tier please subscribe smash like hit the bell please support the channel on patreon paypal or venmo go to my website to download my courses notes and cases or if you'd like me to personally tutor you be safe stay happy study hard this is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.